Drop sets are why people perform a set, can't be bothered to re-rack the weight, so they drop their load on the floor and walk away. And by drop their load, I mean drop the weight. To be clear, drop the weight. Which leads me to thanking you for watching the last video and that comedy clip from the buff dudes comes to mind. re rack -a the fear of racking your weight. And so this is an updated video on drop set science where I will be referencing many pieces of research, including Finkatel 2017. What were they thinking? Which is a very important piece of research into drop sets. And don't turn off this video because if you do, I will find you at 1 a.m when you're asleep and I will put branched chain amino acids in your drink. What are drop sets? And so let's get to the real definition of drop sets. Drop sets are where you do barbell back squats with one guy stood either side of you, stripping off a plate after every few reps. Imagine that, no, that would be ridiculous. This gives such a positive message to people watching. And so here's the boring answer. Drop sets are a tool that you may use to extend a set. And you achieve this by decreasing the weight at the end of your regular set and then performing a few more repetitions. Or you could think of this in relation to machines. You perform your regular set, you then move the pin up to a lighter weight and perform a few more repetitions. Now, when it comes to drop sets, most commonly they are performed to what we can think of as mechanical failure. And failure in itself can be a problematic term, but I do always show this definition Training to failure is defined as the point to where the activated muscles are incapable of completing another complete repetition without assistance. And so it's accurate to project the idea that drop sets are a way of going to mechanical failure where you can no longer perform a full range of motion repetition with that drop set weight. However, drop sets don't have to be performed to failure per se, but I would say that its general application is performed to failure. And in terms of how much you lighten the weight, that's a very nuanced topic as intensity is. That would be a whole video in itself. And again, that's something that's very individual to people, how they've set up the structure of their sessions. And so my purpose in this channel with videos like this is to project the evidence based to you in an analytical manner to project the pros, the cons of topics. I do not tell you what you must do. I am not telling you that you must use drop sets. And I'm not telling you to not use drop sets. That decision comes down to you. I'm presenting exercise science as the guide for you. And it's up to you to individualize your program. But importantly, don't suffer from paralysis by analysis. Don't overthink it. Take the information, take stuff which is useful to you, disregard other parts. And the most important thing is the action of doing the work. And so the main takeaway of this video is you absolutely can use drop sets. You are not wrong if you do that. It is a different tool that you can use to stress the muscle fibers and to cause the adaptation of muscle hypertrophy, the growth of muscle. But importantly, drop sets are not a magic wand. They're not this unique and significant tool that you can use that is a magic wand for muscle growth. And that really is the balanced way to project tools such as drop sets or supersets or time under tension, for example. They are tools that you can use in your training to mix things up, to create a different stress, but they are not some kind of unique magic wand that you must use, for example. And so for the physiology of drop sets, I refer you to my playlist on how muscles grow. And specifically, you can think about metabolic stress, the accumulation of metabolites. And put very simply, metabolic stress as one factor for muscle growth can be thought of as performing repeated dynamic contractions. The repetition after repetition of lifting that weight can create this environment of metabolic stress, which can contribute to muscle growth, of course, in the right environment with the other variables such as the correct energy balance, progressive overload in your training. The research is not wide ranging and strong at this point. It's very much an under-researched area. And the current evidence base is pretty unclear or ambiguous as to how effective drop sets are. There are only a handful of studies into drop sets, importantly, where volume is equated. That means that within the study, the group doing the drop sets and the group doing the regular standard sets perform the same amount of work. And that would be important in the studies as it reduces the variables. And so it gives you a better idea of whether whether drop sets are effective for muscle growth or not. And so, for example, in some research we have, different parts of the body were trained using different protocols. For example, Angleria Tal 2017, one leg performed a drop set in the study and the other leg performed standard sets. And Ozaki et al 2018, the same with the arms. One arm performed drop sets, the other arm standard sets for the participants. And of course, in reality, that's not how people train. And so the way that those two studies were structured is slightly problematic, we could say. Unless you're Rafael Nadal, 
or quagmire or morty. I got a weirdly long list of people who have one arm bigger than the other. And also amongst the small amount of studies we have, different muscle groups are focused across the different studies, again, which makes it problematic. Those mother researchers, eh? And so here's a conclusion from Fisher et al. 2016, where volume was equated in the study. The present study supports previous research that the use of advanced training techniques stimulates no greater muscular adaptations when compared with performing more simplified resistance training protocol to momentary muscular failure. And this from Angleri et al., where volume was also equated. CP and DS drop set systems do not promote greater gains in strength, muscle hypertrophy, and changes in muscle architecture compared to traditional resistance training. And so essentially, we're at the stage with the body of evidence where there is no greater benefit to using drop sets than standard sets where volume is equated for muscle growth. Now, there are a few studies that did show drop sets to be superior, but this is a trap that people fall into. That does not mean that drop sets are better, and I'm going to explain why. In Goto 2004, the drop set group did gain more muscle, but they also performed more work. They did more volume. And so absolutely that could be a reason as to why they gained more muscle. And so that's a severe flaw in the structure of that study. And here is the most promising research we have into drop sets being superior for muscle growth than standard sets. And this is Finkatel 2017. And one of the researchers in this study was Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. And so the drop set group in this study showed around double the muscle growth in their triceps. And so that shows that drop sets are better, right? Well, no, the study had a very small sample size of 16. In addition, it was only over six weeks, a short amount of time. And Brad Schoenfeld, who was one of the researchers, discusses this himself. And so what this study is, is a promising piece of research into drop sets. It means that there should be more research into these protocols, but this study has not been replicated. These results have not been replicated. And so this is important and vital. And please take this away, not just from this video, but what I try and do on this channel. We have to take a step back from the information, from the data, and look at the research as a whole, not just one piece of research. And if we look at the various studies into drop sets versus standard sets, we can cannot say that drop sets are better. It's very much unclear, ambiguous. The current literature is equivocal as to whether drop set training provides an additive hypertrophic benefit to performing traditional resistance training with straight sets, at least when total training volume is equated between conditions. More research is needed in this area to draw more definitive conclusions as to the relevance of drop sets use for muscle growth. And this is called the analysis. And so here are some reasons that you may want to include drop sets. The main one is really time efficiency. And that may suit your training split, for example, how you fit your training into your daily life with your commuting, with your work, with your home life, your family life. Maybe drop sets are actually a very time efficient way of you getting some work in. It's a change. Change equals adaptation. If we are changing the way that we train and it doesn't have to be huge changes, it can be small tweaks. We can create different stresses on the body, different stresses on those muscle fibers, the type one, the type two A, the type two X. Shock them into growth, as Arnold used to say. What about intangible reasons? It may be exciting for you to include drop sets. You may be bored with your current programming and you put drop sets in and you feel excited to get to the gym to try this different protocol to tweak these exercises. Those intangible reasons which may help with your discipline, with your consistency of training, are absolutely valid. But here's reasons you may not want to include drop sets. If you do have ample training time, perhaps performing drop sets may decrease from the quality of your regular sets. And by quality, we can think of exercise execution. After all, drop sets do create extra fatigue on the body, and this may actually detract from the quality and execution of your standard working sets. And there is the issue of doing too much at the point of diminishing returns, and we can can even think about this in relation to, for example, the concept of junk volume. But again, it depends on how you're structuring your sessions. The continuous use of drop sets may be detrimental over time. Given that drop sets are highly taxing to the neuromuscular system from repeated bouts of training to muscular failure, persistent, excessive use would conceivably heighten the risk of overtraining. The threshold for the use of drop sets invariably will be specific to the individual, and programming must take into account both genetic and environmental factors. What about recovery time, I've discussed in other videos how if you are training to a form of failure, that your recovery time may be increased. And so what I'm doing here is connecting this concept to other concepts. I'm going across my videos. I'm doing the old Tom Cruise minority report, moving my hands around, but I'm not jumping on the sofa. And you can also relate this to your specific exercise. Perhaps the larger 
more stressor exercises, such as those major compound barbell exercises, the bench press, the squat, for example, maybe they are not the exercises you use drop sets for because they're already creating such a large stress on the muscular system, on the nervous system, for example. However, perhaps the more isolated single joint exercises, such as bicep curls, you do apply drop sets to. Or if you do want to use drop sets with a chest pushing movement, perhaps you do that if you're using a machine where it could be safer than being under a barbell. Now, what I've just said are potential applications. Again, I'm not telling you that is set in stone. Those are ideas for you. And I wish you success in your training. I'm James Linker. This was the Shredder Sports Science. Fitness, comedy, social media, satire, a range of different videos on this channel. My next one's gonna be a little naughty.